Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at some triangle proofs, and in particular, we're going to be proving that two triangles are congruent. And the main thing that we're going to be using to prove those two triangles congruent is going to be one of our triangle congruence postulates that we learned about previously. So let's take a look at example number one. It says, given segment AD is congruent to segment DC, so we see in our figure over here, this is segment AD and this is segment DC, and it says segment AB is congruent to segment BC, so AB and BC, and we're trying to prove that triangle ADB, which is this triangle over here, is congruent to triangle CDB, this triangle over here. So the first thing we do in our triangle congruence proofs is we want to mark up our figure with the information that we're given. So segment AD and segment DC are congruent. So let's mark AD and DC congruent. Segment AB and segment BC are also congruent. So let's mark those two segments congruent. Now, this is all the information that we're given here in our given statement, but I can actually see that there's one other piece of information that I can mark on my triangle. In particular, I can mark that this side, if you want to call it this common side, this side that's common to both of these two triangles, which is segment BD. Segment BD, notice that it's a side of this triangle and it's also a side of this triangle. Well, I'm going to say that segment BD is congruent to itself. And you may recall that anything that's congruent to itself, we say that is using the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm going to be using the reflexive property of congruence to say that segment BD is congruent to itself. Now notice what I have here is I have two triangles and in these two triangles I have one, two, three pairs of sides congruent. In other words, the three sides on this triangle are congruent to the three sides of this triangle. Well, that is the triangle congruence postulate known as the side-side-side postulate. So we're going to be using the side, side, side postulate to prove these two triangles congruent. So let's see what our proof is going to look like. Statement number one, I'm going to start with my given statements. I've got segment AD congruent to segment DC. That's given. I've also got segment AB congruent to segment BC. And that's also given. I've got that segment BD is congruent to itself, so let me put that one down here. Segment BD is congruent to segment BD. And the reason for that is the reflexive property of congruence, which just says that all segments are congruent to themselves. Now what I have is I have shown that this segment is congruent to this segment this segment is congruent to this segment, and this segment is congruent to itself, so I have shown that all three sides of this triangle are congruent to all three sides of this triangle, which means I can say that these two triangles, triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CDB, and the reason I can say that those two triangles are congruent is by the side, side, side postulate. And remember the side, side, side postulate says if the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then those two triangles are congruent. And that's exactly what we have here. We have one, two, three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle. Therefore, those two triangles are congruent by the side, side, side postulate. All right, let's take a look at example two. I've got this diagram over here, and let's take a look at our given information. It says Z, point Z, is the midpoint of ST. So point Z is the midpoint of ST. Well, if point Z is the midpoint of this segment, then I know that these two segments must be congruent because that's the definition of a midpoint. A midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So I can make these two congruence marks here by the say the definition of a midpoint. That's how come these two segments here are congruent. <laughs> angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, so I'm told this angle is congruent to this angle. So I have these two sides. This side on this triangle is congruent to this side on this triangle. This angle of this triangle is congruent to this angle of this triangle. And once again, I have a 
common side for these two triangles. Segment RZ is the side, it's a side in this triangle and also a side in this triangle. I'm just going to mark this triangle, this side, and I'm going to say that side is congruent to itself. And again, I can use the reflexive property to say that. So now what I have is I have a side, I have two sides and the included angle of one triangle congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle. And I recognize that as being my side angle side postulate. So I'm going to be using the side angle side postulate to show that these two triangles are congruent. All right, well, let's write down each one of the pieces of information that we have. So Z is the midpoint. We'll start with our given information here. Z is the midpoint of segment ST. That's given. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. That's given. Now I need to say, let's see, I have these two triangles congruent. I need to be able to say that segment TZ is congruent to segment SZ. So segment TZ is congruent to segment SZ. And how do I know these two segments are congruent? I know they're congruent by the definition of a midpoint. Since Z is the midpoint of ST, by the definition of a midpoint, these two segments must be congruent. So let's see, what else do I need? I have these two angles congruent. I have these two segments congruent. Oh yeah, I need this segment here congruent, the, the other side of my triangle. So I need to say segment RZ is congruent to itself, which is the, once again, I'm using the reflexive property of congruence. And now I have all the information I need to use my side angle side postulate. I have two sides and the included angle of one triangle congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle. So I can say these two triangles are congruent. Triangle RZS is congruent to triangle RZT by the side angle side postulate. All right, example number three. I'm going to have another diagram of two triangles, and I'm given angle B is congruent to angle D. So let me go ahead and mark that here. Angle B congruent to angle D. I'm told segment AC, that's this segment here, bisects angle BCD. So let's see. BCD, that's this angle over here. And if AC bisects this angle, that means this angle and this angle must be congruent. And I know these must be congruent because that's the definition of an angle bisector. So definition of angle bisector tells me that those two angles are going to be congruent. And I left out my prove statement here. This is supposed to say prove. Let's see, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. Okay, so let's see. I've got this angle congruent to this angle, this angle congruent to this angle. Oh, I've got one more thing I can mark as congruent. I can use, once again, I can use my reflexive property to say that segment AC is congruent to itself. So if segment AC is congruent to itself, and that's going to be using my reflexive property again, Now I have two angles and the non-included side of this triangle are congruent to two angles and the non-included side of this triangle and I recognize that as being my angle angle side postulate. So I'm going to use the angle angle side postulate in this case. Okay, so now I just need to write down all of my information that I have 
and then I'm going to finish up with the angle angle side postulate. So let's see. Start with my given statements here. Angle B is congruent to angle D. That's given. Segment AC bisects angle BCD. That's given. Now, since segment AC bisects angle BCD, I know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And that's because of the definition of an angle bisector. Since I know this is an angle AC is an angle bisector, then by the definition of angle bisector, angle bisector, then angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Okay, so I have this pair of angles congruent. I have this pair of angles congruent. Oh, I need my side for my angle-angle side postulate. So I can say segment AC is congruent to segment AC. And that's by the reflexive property of congruence. And let's see. I have two angles and the included side of one triangle congruent to the two angles and the included, or excuse me, the non-included side of another triangle. So I can say these two triangles are congruent by the angle-angle side postulate. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by the angle-angle side postulate. So hopefully you're starting to see that the way all these triangle proofs go is you basically mark up your triangles, you mark up your diagram with the information that you have, and then you decide which of your triangle congruence postulates are you going to use to show that those two triangles are congruent. Then you just fill in all of the information that you need in order to use that particular postulate. Let's take a look at one more example. Example number four. Now, let's see. Here I'm told, I have this figure here, and I'm told segment AB is parallel to segment CD. So let's see. AB is parallel to CD. So let me put my triangle congruence marks here. AB, segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Also, segment AD is sorry, not congruent, parallel. Segment AD is parallel to segment BC. So this is AD, this is BC. So these two segments are also parallel. I'll put double arrows on those. And here I'm supposed to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Now, it looks like, okay, now right away I can see I'm gonna be able to say that segment AC is congruent to itself by the reflexive property again. And I don't have any other information except for this parallel information, so I'm guessing I'm going to need to use something that I know about parallel lines and a transversal. So let's see, if I look at this first pair, this first set of parallel lines here, and if I look at this as my transversal, then I can see that these two angles here, angle number one and angle number three, are going to be congruent because angle one and angle three are alternate interior angles. If these are my parallel lines and this is my transversal, these are alternate interior angles. And I have a theorem called the alternate interior angles theorem that tells me if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So here I'm going to use the alternate interior angle theorem to show that these two angles are congruent. Also, since I also have these two lines parallel, and this is my transversal, I know that angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 4 by using, again, this same theorem. And I could redraw, I could redraw these lines over here. If this is my line BC and this is my line AD, and this is my transversal, then this is going to be angle 4 here. This is going to be angle 2 here. And I can see these are alternate interior angles. So now I have two angles 
and the included side of one triangle congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, I'm going to be using my angle side angle postulate. All right, so let's write down all of our information here leading up to the angle side angle postulate. So let's see. Segment AB parallel to segment CD, and I'm going to go ahead and put these on the same line here. AD is also parallel to segment BC, so that's given. Let's see. Let me go ahead and say AC is congruent to itself. Segment AC is congruent to segment AC. That's the reflexive property. So I've got my side of this triangle congruent to my side of this triangle. Let's see, angle one and angle three are going to be congruent. And I know angle one is congruent to angle three by the alternate interior angles theorem. Which says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Let's see, angle two and angle four are congruent also by the alternate interior angles theorem. And let's see, now I have my two angles and the included side of one triangle congruent to the two angles and the included side of another triangle. So I have everything I need for my angle side angle postulate. Therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by the angle side angle postulate. Now you have a couple of more examples in your notes. You've got example five and six which are similar to these in which you're trying to prove two triangles are congruent. I want you to try those on your own. You also have a couple of other examples after that. Examples seven and eight which are we're going to take our ability to show two triangles are congruent and then we're going to take those a step farther, but we're going to take a look at those in class tomorrow. So I want you to go ahead and try examples 5 and 6. You should be able to do 5 and 6 on your own. If you want to try 7 and 8 as well, then I encourage you to try those uh, also. We'll take a look at these in class tomorrow.